Hello everyone. The end of the year is creeping up so fast and one of my goals for 2024 was to stay on top of new horror releases. I've done pretty well so far but there are still quite a few I have yet to get to. So I sorted through my most anticipated list and pulled out a handful of titles that I am so super hyped for and I just cannot imagine not reading these before the year ends. And in this video, I'll be reading them. I'm so, so excited to get into these. And first up is Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman. Hello. I am 38% into incidents around the house. So I thought I would check in because I am having a moment. <laughs> the part that I just read, oh my gosh, it's things are really going down. So if you're unfamiliar with the book, we are following Bella, who is a child. The story is told from her POV. We know that Bella has these interactions with this thing she calls other mommy and other mommy is asking things of her. She's constantly asking her, Bella, will you let me into your heart? She's talking to her and trying to coerce her and doing things and saying things and really trying to get Bella to open up to her. Her parents are pretty much solely referred to as Dado and Mommy. They definitely are having like issues of their own outside of this entity and the stress that it is giving to Bella because her interactions with other Mommy are not really pleasant at this point. She's very stressed. She's very scared of this creature. She is like trying her best to avoid it, to keep it calm, and to just stay away from it as much as possible. The book really has done a great job of pacing, in my opinion. I feel like it's really ramped up very evenly. And at the point that I'm at now, like there has been some like seriously tense, scary and surprising moments. So I'm very excited to see where the second half goes. I've really been enjoying getting to know this family. I really feel so deeply for Bella and I really hope she makes it out okay. Oh my gosh. Um, I just want to give her a hug. She's, she's just a little thing and having to like go through everything that she's going through, not only with other mommy, but you know, her parents are having a hard time dealing with this. And outside of this whole situation, they're having issues of their own. And I love that the book is from Bella's perspective. We get to see how Bella sees her parents, both together and separately, and how other mommy fits into this and everyone else in their life, like they'll have a party or go here or go there. And everything is told from Bella's perspective. And I really, really, really enjoy that. So I'm gonna go continue reading. I probably won't check in again until I am finished with the book, which probably won't be today, but I'm very excited to see what happens. I don't think it will take me too, too long because all I wanna do is read. What a roller coaster. Wow. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> wow. I finished um, The Night Guest. It was fine. Mediocre. I think I'm gonna give it three stars. I don't understand why people are so up in arms about the cat stuff. Like I was reading some reviews and people literally giving this book one star because of the cat thing. It's not even graphic. Like I was expecting extreme horror level graphicness with the way people are going off about the cat stuff. And literally it's just a mention. Like we're aware of it. Like obviously what was happening was bad, but just the way people were reacting to it. 
obviously not everyone, but the way people, some people are reacting to it, I really was expecting it to just be like absolutely horrific. Uh, we're following a woman who um, is waking up feeling really unrested and tired all the time and sore. She ends up getting a smartwatch and finding out that she's has all these steps in while she's supposed to be sleeping. So she sets up like a video camera and tries to figure out what's happening. And that leads her down a very uh, odd path of <laughs> realizing what she's doing. It was fine. Um, I don't know. It wasn't anything <laughs> special. I feel like I've read stories like this before. That's not to say that it was bad. I just don't think it was anything special. So it's fine though. Three stars. Um, it was enjoyable enough. I listened to the audio. That was good. But yeah, so there's that. And now I am on to We Used to Live Here by Marcus Clayworth. Clayworth? That book. We just had a huge storm and there's a beautiful double rainbow. It's so pretty. It's so big, it goes right over the street. Ah, it's so pretty. This is the other side of the street. <laughs> it's clearing up. And then you keep moving and moving to the side. We had a huge dust storm that turned into a rainstorm. So weird. Look how orange it is. Hello, I have finished We Used to Live Here, so I'm going to talk about it. Also, the Goodreads Awards is finally up. I've been seeing a lot of people doing like live reactions and predictions for winners and things, which is always fun. I'm not going to do one. I just don't care about them, <laughs> the awards that much. Um, I don't read in enough of the genres to like really get like genuinely excited. I mean the horror section is always of interest to me but that's really like the only one I voted on this year which I voted for incidents around the house. I was struggling with whether I wanted to vote for that one or barrier gaze but um, I ended up going with the Josh Mellerman because that one made me cry several times. But the the Chuck Tingle one was a very 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 close second but the type of books I read just don't usually make it in a variety of categories. So I'm very meh about the whole thing. I'm more excited to see like who makes the like Bram Stoker Awards or the Shirley Jackson Awards. Like I'm excited for those ones. Anyway, I just wanted to bring it up, let you know what I'm voting for in the horror category if you care. But that brings me to We Used to Live Here because that did make it into a few of the categories. And I did enjoy the book, but I didn't love it. Um, it's definitely not a five-star read for me. I think I'm gonna give it probably a three. Um, I thought the concept of it was very fun. Um, it kind of reminded me of like House of Leaves, even though I've not read House of Leaves, but I've heard plenty of people talk about House of Leaves and what that's about and kind of the vibe of the book. And I feel like based on what people have said about House of Leaves, what I've heard about it, um, I feel like this has a similar sort of vibe. It also reminded me a bit of the book You Should Have Left or the novella. Um, that actually made it into my top 10 last year. So you would think that I would really love this book, but, um, you know, they have their differences, of course, but it did remind me kind of of it. So basically in the book, we are following a queer couple, um, mostly just one of them, Eve. They have bought this new place. They are just moving in. Um, Eve is home by herself. In comes a knock at the door. She answers it and on her doorstep is a man, a woman, and their three kids. And the guy, Thomas, he's like, um, hey, I used to live here. I'm sorry this is, you know, so sudden, but we're just passing through. Um, my family really wants to see the old place 
that I grew up at and I was just wondering if we could just take a look around and um, even though Eve is presented as a very anxious person she's a people pleaser she's you know not very um, you know self-assertive and stuff so she like does this whole thing maybe 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 yes no yes no whatever and then eventually lets them in from the synopsis I thought I don't know why I read it as where like they refuse to leave that's not the case um, they keep saying that they want to leave but things keep happening that prevent them from leaving. And then as the book goes on, more and more weird things start happening. Eve um, starts to really progress into just like anxiety about having these strangers in her house to like more and more paranoia and extreme anxiety verging on hysteria like she really like there are so many points <laughs> throughout the book where I'm just like I just want to smack her I just want to shake her and be like get yourself together get yourself together woman I I loved the stuff with like the house and the property and the you know surrounding area um in between the chapters with what's happening at the house we're getting like um transcripts of interviews things that have happened previously at this property previous owners um run-ins with authorities and what people have said about things happening around this area just to give us you know more information more breadcrumbs as to what could possibly be going on and while i still found that interesting I don't know. I didn't really love what the author did with the main character. I just, I, I get it. I get why she was made that way. And I get that that's supposed to add like to fear or tension or the terror aspects of the book. I was at no point ever really scared. I didn't really feel that. I feel like it leaned more into like speculative, like it just, intrigued me. It um, piqued my curiosity. It didn't really trigger those, um, you know, fearful, scared moments. And I think that's because I didn't really connect with Eve. She was just so, like, I, I get being an anxious person. I understand that. But she was just felt so hysterical all the time. <laughs> Like her voice was constantly quaking and she was always just so like frantic about everything that I just found myself getting annoyed with her a lot. And it led to like an unsurprising ending for me. I don't know. I, I like the idea of the book, um, but I think I liked more of like the speculative elements, the stuff with the house and the property and that stuff. Um, way more than like the actual characters and what was what was happening there. I would be curious to reread it again because I feel like I could probably get more out of it and also maybe this is something that I did need to have a physical book for. I just couldn't get access to one. My library hold was outrageous um, for my local library to get a physical book and um, I didn't want to buy the ebook or an actual physical copy because I've never read anything from this author before. And I'm glad I didn't because it wasn't a favorite for me. But I do think having a physical copy might have helped because I think um, that there's like pictures and stuff in it. And I know a lot of like audiobooks, if you get them through th certain services, you can access the PDF. But I didn't buy the audiobook. I got it through my library and they don't add on any PDF for me to look at um, in Libby. So I wasn't able to actually see pictures of like symbols that they were finding around the house. And I guess there's like a map of the house or something like that. Like I just feel like it would have been beneficial if I would have had a physical copy. So I do think at some point I might want to reread this one um, and see if that helps any but just going off of the audiobook experience I don't know it was a 3.5 for me oh my gosh I was just 
talking my own ear off and I wasn't even recording. <laughs> anyway, hello. Um, I have finished with Rest Stop by Nat Cassidy. So here I am to tell you about it. I am all decked out in my uh, Christmas wear. And I know it's not even December yet, but I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I found a bunch of these uh, Christmas scarves at Dollar Tree. So I bought a whole bunch of different patterned ones and you will, you will see them all in the days leading up to Christmas. Anyway, Rest Stop by Nat Cassidy. I loved it. It was so, so good. I'm giving it a 4.5. Um, I may round up to five on Goodreads. I don't know why I'm holding back from a five, but I am. There is a lot of election talk in it, but um, so I think that might potentially turn some people off. He doesn't, it's not like super heavy with the commentary or anything, but the time period in which this story takes place is 2016. Trump is running against Hillary and it's in the days like right before the election. So, you know, his face is on magazines and there's Trump MAGA stuff going around and there's that kind of stuff. It's not a huge focus at all, but it is mentioned. So I just thought I would mention it just to, you know, put that out there. Um, and then he talks about it a little bit in the acknowledgments. But I loved, um, you know, the little the little jabs he had <laughs> towards the tea man. And um, that made me happy to kind of know his stance on that. But other than that, it's pretty much just a fun read, I thought. The main character, Abe, is quite a humorous fellow. I wouldn't say like it's super comical, but at the same time, like the discussions that he has with people, um, memories that he has throughout the book, the way that he talks to himself, like his inner voice, I just think is very kind of like lighthearted, I guess. Like he just seems like a nice, he's a nice guy and is quite funny. He's quite funny. Um, he's kind of like a, a clumsy guy. He's quite self-deprecating. He's not a ladies man type of guy. He's a very average Joe, considers himself a very average Joe, less than average sort of guy. But he's humorous in a lot of ways. And I really liked that vibe to the book. It was a book that wasn't like super serious horror. It was really funny and yet still was quite <laughs> quite terrifying in spots. It gets quite um, weird and a bit <laughs> goofy and crazy at times, but, um, but I thought the horror was really good and it read really fast and really fun. I don't even know if I said we are following a guy named Abe. There has been a family emergency, so he is traveling um, to the hospital where his family is at. And um, on the way, he stops at a gas station, rest stop sort of convenience store place and ends up getting locked in the bathroom. And throughout the book, we are, um, you know, there with Abe while he's trying to figure out um, how he got stuck in the bathroom, how to get out of the bathroom and um, going through some... <laughs> some really crazy horrifying things while he is stuck at this place. I really enjoyed it and um, yeah so 4.5 for that. I'm so happy I ended up enjoying it. Next up I'm going to be reading how to how to make a horror movie and survive by Craig DeLuey. I'm very excited for this one. I have not heard amazing things about this for the most part, it seems like people like it well enough, but it doesn't seem to be anyone's like favorite book of all time or anything. Last year, episode 13 made my top 10 of the year. So I would really love it if Craig showed up on my top 10 for this year as well. Will he with this one? I don't know. My hopes aren't that high, to be honest, but I hope at least I still enjoy it. I feel like my expectations surrounding it are correct. Um, I'm expecting it to be a little bit more of like a horror comedy sort of deal. 
and more about the director's obsession with like making a horror movie and not so much like a slasher or anything like that. Um, that's my expectations going in. So I feel like after this one, especially after rest stop, I'm in the mood for horror comedy. Like I said, this one was very uh, comical in a way. Just the voice of the narrator, Abe, um, is very comical. So I'm in the mood for that and looking forward to that. Um, if that's what I end up getting out of this one. But yeah, we'll see. Maybe it'll be an all-time favorite for me. Just because other people are very meh about it doesn't mean that I will feel the same. So that's what I'm going to be reading next. And uh, I'll check in when I have something to say about it. Hello. <laughs> Don't mind my face. <laughs> that's really rude to say. My face looks like ultra red today because it is my day off and I'm not putting makeup on. I did shower. My hair is crazy. It just, it is what it is. <laughs> but I got my Christmas sweater on. My first Christmas sweater of uh, the season. It's not, it's not December yet, but look at his little poof ball nose. I love it. I, this is my favorite Christmas sweater that I own. Anyway. I am not here to show off my post shower crazy looking self and <laughs> a Christmas sweater. I'm here to talk about books specifically. What's it called? I always struggle with the name of this book, How to Make a Horror Movie and Survive by Craig DeLuey. I have finally finished it. I meant to have this video up a few days ago, but the book has taken me quite a while to get through. I did end up enjoying the book quite a bit. Not an all-time favorite, but I did end up enjoying it. However, the audiobook really, I really did not like. Um, I did end up listening to it on and off throughout my read, um, but at like 10%, I was like, no, I'm not going to listen to this anymore. It's ruining my experience. I really don't like the narration style um and i decided to switch to ebook which i do own i did that for a while but reading with just my eyeballs takes me forever i just i need to be able to have an audio so when i'm doing other things when i need to like be multitasking i can do that i can listen to a book while i'm doing other things i really need an audio in order to get through a book in a timely fashion um, and when I'm doing a vlog it needs to be done you know fairly quickly so it's taken me a little bit of time it's taken me probably like five days <laughs> to finish this book but it finally is finished and like I said I did end up enjoying it quite a bit um, but definitely not an all-time favorite I don't know I liked the story I liked the characters a lot of parts of it were really entertaining but then also I found my mind wandering sometimes like I said I had an issue with the audio narration so while listening to that it made me laugh because the narrator his vocal <laughs> style the way he reads is so like exaggerated and just it sounds jokey to me it just sounds over the top outrageous like bad acting like b c d movie-esque i did go on audible and listen to some of his other books because you can like listen to samples like they they have one minute clips for all of the books they offer on there if you didn't know you probably do um so i just listened to samples of a bunch of other books that he's done mostly sci-fi he's done and his voice sounds the same <laughs> for everything that at least I clicked on. I didn't click on everything, but I clicked on a few different things that I didn't think would have the same kind of tone. And he read them all the same. So I think this is just, I think that's just him. And either the publishers or the author thought this would suit the book well. It does fit the tone of the book, but at the same time, I just I didn't I didn't love it I won't listen to another audiobook with this narrator but the story itself was pretty fun we're following a film director named Max he um, has this very particular way of 
how he wants to present horror. He takes very seriously and he really doesn't like how modern Hollywood is all about, um, you know, cheap scares, teen slashers, um, you know, they want the audience laughing and rooting for the killer and behaving in a certain way because that's what sells tickets. That's what people go to theaters for. And the, this particular um, director, he's like, no, I want, I don't want anybody laughing at my movie. I want them scared. I want them on the edge of their seat. He wants a particular reaction. Um, he has a particular vision of what horror really is. So throughout the book, we are following Max as he's trying to make a horror movie in his vision, but he's meeting people along the way and dealing with people along the way. Actors, writers, producers, film execs, um, a lot of different people who have their own vision of what they want this film to be or what they think horror is. So a lot of the book is just discussions around horror. So if you're a horror lover, specifically like horror films and possibly like behind the scenes types of stuff, this book has a lot of that, but it's all told in like a kind of humorous, light-hearted sort of way. It's not like a non-fiction or something. I loved those discussions within the story. But within all of those discussions, Max is actually making a movie and we we're following Max making the movie and he's filming the movie with a camera that um, has a very dark history and we learn what happened with the camera, why it functions the way it does, and how it works and all of that. And that stuff, I don't know. I, I liked the idea behind it, but the way we learn about things, I felt like a lot of it was telling, not showing. Um, I mean, we do get some showing, but the ins and outs of how everything works, it's very like this character just telling Max how it works and he's like oh okay I didn't really like the way those things came about how we learned what was happening but other than that I thought the story overall was pretty fun the kills were really outrageous and very unique and fun I really liked some of the characters I thought Max was fine I don't think he's meant to be a super likable character but um, I didn't mind following along with him it was it was a, overall a really fun book but like I said, the audio narration, it was really over the top. Didn't really love, love it. I did kind of add to the goofiness of it, the humor of it, the tone of it. But also I feel like it maybe like pushed that too hard in sections that could have been a bit more serious because when I was reading on ebook like I could still still sense the tone but it didn't come off nearly as goofy as when I was listening to the audiobook and I don't know in some instances that worked and I was laughing and in other instances I was rolling my eyes and like oh I just can't stand this guy <laughs> I feel so bad. I feel so bad saying that, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Anyway, overall, um, I did enjoy the book well enough, though, with my mix of feelings and experiences. So I'm going to give it a 3.5. I will probably round down to three on Goodreads, but, you know, it was still overall a good enough time. And that was that. That is my final book for this vlog. I can finally get it up for you guys. <laughs> I really had a good time, I think, over this last, I don't know, week and a half now, two weeks almost, um, that I've been reading for this video project. I think I had an overall really good time. Um, I do wish I kind of would have placed things a little bit differently because I feel like I read my favorite at the beginning and I maybe should have flip-flopped it. It's not like I knew that the Josh Mallerman was going to be my favorite of the vlog, but I have loved a lot of things of his in the past, so I probably should have saved that for last, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, I found two books that I really, really loved, Incidents Around the House and Rest Stop, and the other three were fine. Good enough time. I didn't hate anything, so hey, successful vlog, I think. 
Um, let me know in the comments if you guys have read any of these books, if you had similar experiences or alternately, if you had a completely different, I'm, I'm down to hear all of the experiences down below. I do hope you enjoyed them though. I will have links to my socials as always down in the description in my link tree. Also make sure you're subscribed if you would like to see more videos from moi. I will have my next video is either going to be my December TBR game or another uh, reading vlog style video where I go through five of my lowest rated horror books that are on my Goodreads. I'm nervous for that one, but also very excited. Um, I typically have some good results from those. So we'll see how this one goes. I haven't started it yet. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, night, whatever it is, wherever you are. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.